Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. In the initial scene, we are shown a pregnant lady who was direly taken to the medical clinic during a rainstorm to conceive an offspring. Afterward, the specialist illuminates her better half, Greg, that she unfortunately died during labor. Additionally, he discloses that their infant has albinism, a genetic condition that results in lack of pigmentation. After that, Greg is taken to the infant for a brain wave examination. Sadly, when he sees the pale baby, he is overcome with grief to the point where he rejects the child as his own. The narrative then cuts to two decades later, when Sheriff Doug and his team are looking into an elderly man's recent death at a farmhouse. Although an albino might have died from a heart attack, they concluded that the man did. They come across an underground basement where they discover a boy hiding while searching the house. In spite of their endeavors to persuade him out, he denies, thinking that he is terrified, Doug calls upon a youngster's administration's therapist named Jesse Caldwell for help. She shows up not long after and promptly heads to the cellar where she finds the kid concealing in a dim corner. Through Jesse's support, eventually, the boy enters the light, exposing his brilliant white skin. Jeremy Reed is his real name, but because of his bright skin tone, people call him Powder. It becomes clear that Powder has never left the house. So who gave him the epithet? Sooner or later, Jesse asks Powder for what good reason he didn't contact the police when his granddad died. Accordingly, the unfortunate kid makes sense of that his granddad cautioned him that he could be removed assuming anybody saw him. So he generally avoided others for training. He has memorized all of the books in his small library. Powder guarantees that he can present every single section of the multitude of books he claims. When Jesse hears this, he chooses a difficult book that is usually written for college students and asks him to recite a specific page number. Powder assists the page's first paragraph error-free, to her astonishment. Powder then follows Jesse out of the basement, where she takes him to a boys' hostel because the state is now looking after him. Upon their appearance, the other young men are charmed by Powder's appearance as they have never seen somebody like him. That later night, while Powder is eating at the inn, a group of menaces approaches him. John, the leader, wants that Powder. Use a spoon to cover his nose. Powder takes the spoon from John and begins to manipulate it, a surprising turn of events. He effortlessly draws other spoons toward it after he gets it to stand up on the table. This shocks all the young men present there. What's more, they expect that Powder is a peculiarity of some sort or another, or perhaps one of his books was about magnets. Steve, on the other hand, is waiting at the door when Doug returns home from work. They pass each other without speaking to each other, indicating their strained relationship. Steve may have arrived to check on his ailing mother, Emma, who is bound to her bed because of malignant growth. The overseer illuminates Doug that seeing their child is brought, Emma. A feeling of recuperating a long ways past what any pain relievers could give. Powder enrolls in high school a few days later and takes a physics class there. An electric current generating apparatus known as the Jacob's Ladder is demonstrated by Professor Ripley. Every time the machine is turned. Powder begins to tremble and feel uneasy. A sudden overload causes the machine to release a powerful electric bolt directly into the powder's chest. He levitates in the air as a result, horrifying every student in the class. All the students rush out of the classroom while Powder lies. Unconscious on the floor, concerned that he has passed away, after Donnelly frantically tries to turn off the machine but fails. He then destroys it with a chair to end the chaos. Donald comes up to him and gives him a body massage. The professor raises his arms in surprise as he experiences an odd sensation. Heron sends him into a state of altered consciousness. In the following scene, Powder is hastily taken to the clinic. However, when Donald tells the doctor about the incident, the doctor doesn't think it was a severe electrical shock like the kind that would normally kill the boy or at least leave burn marks on his body. Donald tries to persuade the doctor by explaining that Powder's body goes through an electrolysis process all the time, which is why. He lacks facial hair. A nurse comes in and tells the two that Powder has escaped from the hospital while they are still talking. He reportedly jumped through the window when nobody was looking. In the interim, Powder is strolling along the roads when he runs over one of his cohorts. Lindsay, they participate in a concise discussion while being seen by an inquisitive neighbor. 
Powder glances back at the neighbor and illuminates Lindsay that he can hear their inward contemplations. He continues his journey back to his grandparents' house, but she thinks he is just having hallucinations because of the electric shock after this powder. However, Duncan, his co-worker, and a dog eventually capture him. Who requested that he get into the vehicle, getting back to the school design has prompted a meeting space to examine his outstanding insight. The principal pays impersonal a visit and informs her that his IQ test results have been released. Powder's IQ appears to be over. 300, which is undeniably more than that of the most shrewd individual on the planet. The rule reports that he is a novel and exceptional person. In any case, Powder shows no interest in such matters and basically demands to be permitted to get back. He is unfortunate. Since the house now belongs to the bank, Jesse reveals that he is unable to return home. In the following scene, Powder sits by himself while the high school students, along with Doug and Duncan, go camping in the woods that evening. While the students gather around a bonfire, Powder sits alone. Seeing this Doug approaches him and the two start talking simultaneously, a rainstorm starts and Powder specifies that he can detect the tempest inside himself. He communicates that when he sees lightning, it draws him in like a magnet. Even though he doesn't believe it, he spits out his pants when he hears thunder and recalls his grandmother telling him it was God. He additionally uncovers that his mom was struck by lightning while pregnant with him which seems, by all accounts, to be the justification for his extraordinary condition the following morning, as Powder is meandering in the forest. John and Mitch, the bullies, approach him without any justification. John declares that he can kill him immediately as he points his gun at Powder. In any case, before he can pull the trigger, everyone's focus is shifted when they hear a distant gunshot. When they rush in the right direction, they find that the Duncan has been shot. A deer designs profound, impacted by the sight. Also, as he can sympathetically detect the aggravation and apprehension about the perishing deer, what on earth does that have to do with lightning when he can't endure anything else? He gets Duncan's wrist with one of his hands while putting the other on the deer's neck. Duncan is shocked when the deer's pain and fear are transferred to him by powder, which causes Duncan to violently convulse. As the impact escalates, John Eames, his weapon at powder, requesting that he deliver the Official. In any case, our hero just gazes him in the eye and torments. John shoots Duncan in rage, but Mitch intervenes just in time to raise the gun and ultimately save Powder's life. Powder is brought back to Jesse after these events, and he is asked about what happened. She is truly stressed over his prosperity in perspective. Nonetheless, Powder disregards every one of her inquiries and states that he needs to get back when she continues to demand he ends up being irate and inadvertently releases his powers, causing glasses, as well as the lights. He then leaves unhesitatingly, expressing that Jesse will not have the option to save him there for grass. In the meantime, Doug goes back to his house and meets with the family doctor, who tells him how much his wife is hurting and how much worse her condition is getting. Dog believes that there must be a reason the doctor informs him that he will never know, despite the fact that he does not comprehend why she chooses to hold on. The reason is that the dog's wife cannot communicate at all. Powder is alone in the dining room the following day. At the point when Donald approaches him, the teacher uncovers that he felt a particular energy inside himself when he contacted Powder during the prior occurrence in class. He says that the energy is very strong, causing him to feel young once more. He also discusses Einstein's theory, which states that a person can do unimaginable things if they use all of their brain. Maybe Powder can do exactly that, which makes sense of his inconceivable powers. Donald then says that he would like to be friends with Powder to learn more about him. The terrified young men, a piece reluctant from the start, however he in the long run concurs. Doug, on the other hand, goes to Duncan's house and finds that he has taken away all of his guns despite being a firm believer. Devotee of hunting. At the point when gotten some information about the explanation Duncan becomes close to home and offers his experience of sympathizing with the deer's aggravation, when Powder moved it to him. He describes it as a very distressing sensation that made him feel as though he was about to die. Duncan acknowledges that the incident left him so traumatized that he can no longer bear to hold a gun. Hearing this, Doug understands that Powder has unprecedented capacities, and this gives him a thought. He chooses to take the young men, assist in speaking with his critically ill spouse utilizing clairvoyance. Later, 
Doug brings Powder to his house and gently touches Emma, his ailing wife, to introduce him. Powder dives into her brain, depending her contemplations to the sheriff through Powder's clairvoyant association. She reminds Dog of a cherished memory from Steve's childhood when they played together in the snow and she lost her wedding ring. Douglas says that his wife is holding on to life because she doesn't want to die without wearing her wedding ring and without reconciling with their estranged son, Steve. Doug recalls Steve's daily arrival home from school hearing this, and tried to find his mother's wedding ring through the snow. Emma then, at that point, uncovers that Steve has previously tracked down the ring, and it has been kept in a silver box on her end table. This time moved by the disclosure Douglas loaded up with a surge of feelings, and he carefully puts the ring on his better half's finger powder than contacts canine's wrist with his other hand. Doug breaks down in tears as he lets his wife's voice overwhelm him, embracing his wife, and reassuring her that everything will be fine. In her last minutes, she opens her eyes one final time before calmly dying. Doug immediately gives Steve a firm hug when he arrives on the scene. The two finally resolve their differences and make amends. The scene shifts to a county fair where Powder meets Lindsay after years of being apart, all thanks to Powder. She appears to be the only individual who does not treat him differently. After some conversation, Lindsay's hands are suddenly touched by Powder, allowing them to hear each other's inner thoughts. During their conversation, Powder's father abandoned him because of his albinism, Lindsay finds out. Feeling terrible, she assures him that his face is the most beautiful in the world and comforts him. After that, she gives him a sudden kiss, drawing the attention of the people who are nearby. Sadly, Lindsay's dad likewise sees the demonstration, provoking him to face Powder and subject him to terrible affronts. Additionally, he gets ready to beat the poor boy. However, fortunately, Jesse, who is additionally at the fair, mediates. She makes an apology on Powder's behalf and removes him. A heartbroken Powder returns to the hostel later and gathers his possessions with the intention of escaping to his farm. He does, however, overhear some boys playing basketball as he is leaving. He walks to the court in a state of curiosity, only to discover that John and his gang Powder do not want to work with them. Therefore, he attempts to leave, but John, the bully, blocks his path and steals his hat. He then considers powdering to utilize his powers and take it back. That would be simple for our protagonist to accomplish, but instead, he delves into John's mind and reveals his agonizing past of being abused by his stepfather. John's stepfather immediately becomes apparent when he sees the hat, which had belonged to his late biological father and caused him to be taunted in the same way that Powder is being taunted right now. Tragically, this just rankles John significantly more. Additionally, he decides to act. John drags Powder outside forcefully as the rain starts to pour out suddenly. To add color to the boy's pale skin, he strips him naked and pushes him into the muddy water. Unable to bear any more humiliation, he unleashes a powerful electromagnetic pulse in the shape of a sphere, sending all the bullies flying. Everyone, with the exception of John's concern, regains their composure after a brief period. Mitch minds him and finds that his hardest quit beating. Powder is overcome with immediate regret when he realizes what he has done and is actually on the verge of death. As a result, he immediately steps in and uses his powers to start giving the bully CPR. Luckily, the methodology works and John is revived back to life. All of the bullies, especially Mitch, are impressed by this. As a result, he decides to assist him. He gives Powder assistance and sneaks into a vehicle traveling toward his grandfather's farm, granting escape easily. Sadly, when Powder gets back, he finds that every one of his assets have been held onto by the bank. Soon after, Jesse comes to him offering comfort and guaranteeing him that she will find a superior spot where he will be acknowledged and perceived. Donald has now joined them, I think. In addition, they ran into Doug and Duncan outside as they were getting ready to leave. Jesse urges Doug to let the boy go and asks for his support. Surprisingly, the officer is of the opinion that Powder has assisted him in reconciling with his long-lost son. In that instant, Powder begins to flow into the field as a thunderstorm breaks out, leaving everyone behind. He is suddenly struck by a lightning bolt, which eventually covers him in a blinding flash of light. Yet again the film closes as the mists release one final resonating, loud thunder, demonstrating the powder has poop his genes. Well, 
He has arrived at the sky. Turn on notifications. Please subscribe for more videos like this. And like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.